What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into the Friday morning edition of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. You should also be following Betting Pros on Twitter at Betting Pros NFL. We are here every morning on BettingPros.com. We are here wherever you get your audio podcast. YouTube for the video, as we're always being brought to you by BetMGM, the $5 bet, $100, free $100 in free bets. If a team scores a touchdown, if you bet a money line, side, total, whatever you bet, using that promo code JUICE100 for new customers at BetMGM. Okay, so last night, (sighs) it's a winning night for me because both prop bets hit and we get the half unit correct for the WNBA game, which went over 170 in the third quarter. (laughs) So that's a laugher. That's a quick, easy win. Like that, we get the two... Uh, We get the two prop bets correct really easily. Joe Burrow goes over his passing totals and Robinson goes over his rushing totals. So we got those right. And then uh, 45 and a half is the total we bet for the over. We miss a field goal. And then at the end of the first half, we do not get that either field goal or touchdown out of Jacksonville. It it ended the game for Jacksonville in in a way, but it really ended the over. And, a lot of people bet under 46, and they should be absolutely thanking the lucky stars that they got it. Because sometimes we get lucky and we win, and sometimes we get unlucky and we lose. This is one of those times where you just have to kind of chalk it up to the right handicap, the right side. We were on the right side. The over should have hit in that game. But due to a missed field goal and then a play call that I just can't believe that they ran and... I hate when it's fourth and one from the goal line. I hate when teams, college does this, and Urban Meyer's got to learn. You can't go shotgun, man. This is the NFL. What are you doing? Get out of center, get right on the guy's butt, and go right forward and put the ball over the top. Tom Brady was a master at it. You got a six foot five quarterback. He's enormous. Under center, hike the ball, jump over the pile, reach out, score a touchdown. It's not hard, okay? Teams do it all the time, and coaches. Urban Meyer, these college coaches come in and they think they can run from the one. And you can't. <laughs> in the NFL, you can't. And that really hurt. I mean, that was a bad loss. I mean, the missed field goal hurt too. But 45 was the total it falls at. We bet over 45 and a half for one full unit. So we lose, unfortunately, on the hook. It's what happens. And right handicap being on the right side, unfortunately, it kind of a bad beat for us there with that. But I had a couple of personal plays. I took... The plus seven and a half pregame on the Jaguars, and then in game at halftime, I took the plus seven on the Cincinnati Bengals. So I hit both of those. So that was a five and one day for me. It turns out to be a three and one day, but technically it's pretty much a flat day, you know, with the one unit loss. And I think we probably wound up down like point one units or less than a half, less than point one, just really nothing. Just a flat day on a three one mark with two quarter unit bets cashing and a half unit bet but the juice comes into play there with those so not not the greatest of nights but we move on to a Friday here and uh, a winning day point I think I was up 0.8 units personally but I think we wound up a little bit down for the day so you know three and one good day for the for the record <laughs> for the betting group for the daily juice record but not a great day for the cash uh, coming in for us here on that okay So I don't have a WNBA play play for you guys today. Uh, Everyone's going to be like, ooh, WNBA. No, not yet. Okay, I may go back to that later. But it's a Friday. We have one play already going with Maryland plus four. That number now is plus three. And it could actually drop below three by the time the game kicks off. We may be seeing some real steam on Maryland. I don't really love that, to be quite honest. But still, the majority of the money and the bets are on Iowa. And yet the number keeps on coming down because respected money keeps on coming in on Maryland. So let's hope that we're on the right side there with respected money for one unit, Maryland, plus the four. Okay, I've got two bets for you guys coming up on Saturday, but I am going to give you a parlay here. And we've missed the last four of these. So we are now 7-28 and 28 on the parlays. Okay, so now we're up eight units on this, hypothetically, if we were betting one unit on this each and every time. So I'm trying to, to kind of snuff out a win here. And kind of get us back up, you know, over $1,000, over 10 units, if you will, on this if we were betting $100 on this. So I haven't hit one in a while. So I'm trying to kind of figure out a way to hit this. So here's where I'm going for the don't bet a parlay parlay on a Friday. It is a four-legger, okay? I am going to take the Dodgers with Clayton Kershaw pitching. Okay, that's the one baseball bet. 
Dodgers are red hot. They're at home. They're taking on the Brewers. Brewers are already in the playoffs. It's just kind of get ready for the postseason, and the Dodgers have to win. They have no choice. So they're in a big race. 4-4 right now with the Giants and the D-backs. They're tied. That game is late. So if Diamondbacks win that game, it's a one-game lead for the Giants going to the final three games of the, se- of the season. You know the Dodgers want to win. They're minus 205 here at home up against the Milwaukee Brewers. So that's the first leg, okay? Second, there are three other legs we're going to jump in here with, okay? The Iowa-Maryland game. I like the dog, as you guys know, plus the four. The total is 47 and a half. Maryland is, they're explosive, okay? But I think against this Iowa defense, I think it's far more likely this is going to be like a complete bruiser of football game. I think Iowa can win this game by three. I think it's like a 20 to 17 potentially potential win for Iowa. That's why I like the four, but I can see Maryland winning the game outright. I have sprinkled on Maryland money line as well. So here's where I'm going. Under 47 and a half, Iowa and Maryland, Friday night. BYU money line laying nine and a half points on the road at Utah, but BYU money line just win the game. Utah State's been horrific straight up against ranked teams over the last couple of years. And then Houston on the road at Tulsa at plus three and a half. I think that hook matters. Houston could be live to win the game outright. Great game in that conference with Houston at Tulsa on a Friday night. Looking forward to watching that game. But we're going Houston plus three and a half. Okay. So it's Dodgers money line. uh, Iowa, Maryland under 47 and a half. BYU money line. Houston plus three and a half. That is a four leg plus 600 parlay for us here on the don't bet a parlay parlay for us on a Friday night. Okay, four legs, three football all happening tonight and baseball late night on a Friday night with the Brewers at the Dodgers with Clayton Kershaw pitching uh, for the L.A. Dodgers. They're minus 205 on the money line right now at the time of taping, okay? So there is a four-leg six plus 600 parlay for the Don't Bet a Parlay parlay. All right, let's start talking about Alabama and Ole Miss. Oh, boy. This number opened at 20, okay? Circus Sports in Vegas, Matthew Metcalf and company, they opened up this number at 20, and they got blasted. And I mean blasted. Immediately blasted. Ole Miss down to 14 okay shop around here i found this at 14 bama minus 14 minus 110 i'm gonna trust that matthew metcalf and company that they know something that they believe alabama defensively is going to take care of business here is why i'm laying alabama minus 14 i think it's on the defense for alabama not the offense I don't mind a play on the under in this game. In fact, I may come back with an Alabama first half bet for a half a unit and an under bet on Saturday for for Saturday's podcast. When the first half line comes out for Bama Ole Miss, I may jump on Alabama. If it's seven, if it gets to be like they always do it and they juice it up to to like eight or nine, I'm going to be angry. But if it's seven, Alabama minus seven, I'm going to throw a half a unit at it. And if it's on the under 79, 80 points, it was 80 at the open. It was bet down to 77 and a half. Public came back in and drove it back up to 79. If we get back to 80, 81 points, I'm coming in on the under. Okay, Alabama, Mississippi on the under for a half a unit as well. But that's for tomorrow's podcast. For today, I'm laying the 14 points with Alabama minus 14. Okay, I know some books are at 14 and a half. Some books are at 14. I don't mind it if you wait to see if you can grab the 14. I, got, I found it in Vegas at 14. I grabbed it. But I think that half a point matters, okay? I think it's an important half a point to get to 14 for Alabama. But I think they win the game by 17-plus. And really, it comes down to the Bama defense. Look, I know what Matt Corral is. I know that 111 points were scored last year. But Alabama's offense last year was much different than this year. This year, you got Brian Robinson. This year, you got Blake Young. This year, you got... Bryce Young, excuse me. This year you got Bryce Young. This year you got Michi and company. They've got a bunch of good players. It's Alabama, okay? But they don't have, you know, what was it, five first-round picks last year? I, I, They don't have that on the offense, okay? Offensive linemen. This Bama offense is scoring 46 points per game. That is third best in the country. 
Ole Miss is the number one offense in the country right now, 52 points per game. They have 638 yards per game. They're averaging 7.5 yards per play. That's fourth best, okay? Alabama's defense is giving up 4.7 yards per play, right? 30th best. Something's got to give. But Bama's offense, 7 points, 7 yards per game, and 479 yards per offense. That's 20th best. And third down conversion, they're fourth best in the country in third down conversion. Ole Miss's defense has played pretty darn good. But really, if you look at who they've played since the win against Louisville, it's not exactly, you know, oh my gosh. They've played Appalachian State and Tulane, okay? They scored 54 points on App State. They've they scored 61 points on Tulane, 43 points on Louisville. Bad defense, bad defense, bad defense, okay? Now, actually, it was Austin P. Sorry, it wasn't Appalachian State. It was Austin P. they played, even worse. This is Alabama on the road in Tuscaloosa. Do you really think that Nick, Nick Saban's going to be comfortable allowing Ole Miss to put up 48 points again? Think Nick Saban's going to allow Lane Kiffin to put this many points up? Matt Corral here or not? I just don't see it, okay? I think Alabama's offense is going to score a lot on Ole Miss's defense. And I think Alabama's going to run the ball a ton. I think Alabama's going to be a real big problem. And I think Bama covers this 14-point line. I really do. I think Alabama is going to be able to do it there, whatever they want on offense against Ole Miss. And I'm just not sold that this offense for the Rebels is going to go into Tuscaloosa and hang 60 on them. Or, like, so Bama, like, play this out for a second. The total's 79 right now, okay? How many points is Bama going to score? Let's just start with 35, okay? Let's start 35 points minimum for Alabama. How many points is Ole Miss going to score, okay? Let's say, okay, they score, mm, let's say 28 points, okay, minimum. How likely is it that Bama scores 40? Pretty high. Do you think Ole Miss is going to match that? Do you think Ole Miss is going to go in there and score that many? I, 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 just, I, I just don't see it. I think they're going to be in for a real frustrating day. When you give up that many points last year, Bama's defense is better this year than last year, in my opinion. Bama's offense is not as good. They're going to run the ball more. They're not going to try to go blow for blow here with Matt Corral and Ole Miss, in my opinion. I think they're going to try to you know, make them make mistakes. And this is really where Ole Miss, I think, misses the two first-round picks, basically, they had off last year's team with the wide receivers. So, uh, look, they're going to score. How many points are they going to score? I think this is going to be a game that Bama is perfectly comfortable playing ball control and just running the ball down their throat and dominating them and running this Ole Miss team into the ground and using this offense that right now is averaging 4.5 yards per rush and 150 yards on the ground per game. And Bama is Alabama. I, I'm going to go back to this. Opening number is 20. I think Circus Sports knew something. Alabama minus 14. Full unit. One unit. Alabama at home minus 14 against Ole Miss. We're laying it here with the Crimson Tide against Ole Miss, going against what everybody else is saying. Popular dog, public dog. Very comfortable laying it with, with the number one team in the country at home. This was at Ole Miss. Might feel differently, but it's at Alabama. Like I mentioned, we could come back tomorrow with another whole unit on this game in terms of the under in the first half for Alabama and Ole Miss. We may have two full units going on this one football game. It's the biggest game of the weekend. 3.30 Eastern time kick on CBS. Okay. Second play for one unit. Let's talk about, and I've been waiting here to find out about Arkansas's injuries, Arkansas and Georgia. K.J. Jefferson and Traylon Burks. K.J. Jefferson is dealing with a knee injury that he suffered against Texas A&M. Now, Sam Pittman said he was sore, but he wasn't going to practice the week, but he thought he would, would be good to go come Saturday. He reiterated that during the week, and I had to talk to some of my people down in and around the Arkansas program who aren't in Arkansas but cover the SEC. And what they're hearing is that K.J. Jefferson is going to play. Okay, now that could be wrong. I'm not saying they have any inside information. Just people I'm talking to, they're hearing that he's going to play. He may be limited, but he's going to try to play. And, well, this is a guy who they really need. And he's incredible running the ball. So it's kind of a bummer if his knee is going to be a little balky. But... I, I think this is an offense, if he's running it, I feel really good. Now, Traylon Burks, number one receiver, he's been limited as well. And if he can't go, that's going to stink. But this number at 18 and a half, boy, you look at some of these numbers. Georgia's defense is only giving up 5.8 points per game, okay? And I get it. They're really, really good. But who has Georgia played? 
They played a Clemson team that has zero offense. They killed UAB. They killed South Carolina. And they killed Vanderbilt. Are we just overly impressed with that? Now, the final scores are impressive, and the numbers are gaudy. 56, 40, and 62 points. But isn't that more of an indictment on UAB, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt than it is on how good this offense is going to be? They scored. They didn't score an offensive touchdown against Clemson. Okay, They won 10-3 because of the pick six that was thrown in that game. And so I'm not so sure this offense can cover this type of number, 18 and a half. It was 19 at one point, okay? I I don't see this. Arkansas's defense is giving up 14.5 points per game. That's 10th best in the country. They've played Texas, and they've played Texas A&M. They've played two very good offenses, and they beat them both. They beat them up with their defense. They're only allowing four yards per play. That's ninth best in the country. 267 yards total offense. That's ninth best in the country. And they're really tough on third down, only allowing 28% conversion. That's 11th best in the country. That's right behind Georgia. Georgia's at 28%. That's 10th best in the country. I mean, you're 28.3 or 28.07. They're right up against each other. I mean, running on this Georgia defense is super hard. 2.3 yards per rush. That's awful. So hard. But it's even harder to pass on these guys right now at 4.6 yards per pass play. That's number one in the country. So, I mean, clearly, they're only giving up 185 yards total offense, number one in the country. 3.1 yards per play, number one in the country. This team for Arkansas has got to be able to run the football, and that's why K.J. Jefferson is so vitally important to play here in this game. I don't mind the under 49.5 here in this game if you want to jump in on it, but since I like the under, and I'm not betting it because you guys, I don't love betting totals. We bet a total last night. I got it wrong. See, I'm just, I, I don't love betting totals. I, I would, I, I'm trying hard this football season to stay away from totals. But Georgia plus 18.5, until Georgia proves they can beat good teams and beat the living tar out of them, I'm taking the points. It's a popular dog. I understand this. But now that I'm comfortable, that I, at least I believe that K.J. Jefferson is going to play, give me the 18.5 points here. You may get 19 on Arkansas on the road at Georgia and just ride this Arkansas defense to keep this to be like a 20-10 to 10 type of win for Georgia. And we're fine with it, right? 10-point win, low-scoring game. I, again, I think this Arkansas defense can keep them in the game, and as long as they're not giving up real big plays, I think there could be one or two big play opportunities for Arkansas to pop it, and, and I, I mean, they could be in the game late. I just think Sam Pittman's got a really special team going, and if he could have the number one wideout and the, and the starting quarterback even at 80% for this game, I think they're live. I think they're going to be right there because I just don't trust JT Daniels, who is dealing with a lat injury of his own. I mean, he may not be able to play as effectively or throw the ball as effectively as you would like. He's got a lat injury that's been bothering him. He's not practicing for Georgia. So that also could be somewhat of an issue. I mean, Georgia is averaging seven yards per play. They're averaging 9.6 yards per pass play. That's 15th best in the country, 4.9 yards per rush. But Arkansas, 3.6 yards defensively given up. That's 44th in the country. To these teams, top five passing, top five defensive rushing. Something's got to give, but passing, it's hard to throw on Arkansas. This is what Texas learned. 4.7 yards per pass play. That's second best in the country, only behind Georgia, who's number one at 4.6 yards. So I think it's a defensive battle. If we like both defenses and unders, you got to take the points here. Plus 18 and a half, Arkansas, one full unit up against Georgia, plus 18 and a half for the Razorbacks up against Georgia. Okay, so... To reiterate here for the don't bet a parlay parlay, Dodgers money line Friday night, Houston plus three and a half at Tulsa, BYU money line under Iowa Maryland forty seven and a half for a four leg plus six hundred don't bet a parlay parlay, Alabama minus fourteen at home against Ole Miss, and we're taking Arkansas at plus eighteen and a half on the road at Georgia. Okay. Alabama at home, home favorite, road dog. We're taking that with Arkansas and Georgia coming up. And K.J. Jefferson, if I'm wrong about K.J. Jefferson and he's out and he doesn't play, I would I would say eject from this bet. And I probably will eject from the bet, okay? So I'm, from what I've told, I'm comfortable betting it now. 
But if K.J. Jefferson gets ruled out, I'll tell you this right now, I will eject from this bet if K.J. Jefferson cannot play. I will go ahead and bet the other side and just get myself out of the, get out of the bet entirely if he does get scratched and he cannot play. But since I was told that he probably will play, we'll lay it. We'll take, we'll, we'll take the points, rather, plus 18 and a half, Arkansas on the road at Georgia, Alabama minus 14 up against Ole Miss, and the parlay for the Don't Bet a Parlay parlay on a Friday. My name is Matt Peralts. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. It's the Daily Juice Podcast right here on BettingPros.com. Always being brought to you by BetMGM.